from the Silicon Valley Media Office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome to this special Cube presentation. We just talked to Charlie Sennett about the fellowship that we're doing with the Ground Truth. So the Tech Truth Fellowship uh, comprises three fellows that came out of a, a very competitive process. Hundreds of uh, applicants uh, applied for the fellowship, and the idea is we're going to the Grace Hopper event in uh, Houston, the Anita Borg Celebration for Women. So I want to introduce you to two of the fellows that will be reporting at the event. Karis Husted is here, and she's with uh, Chicago Inno, uh, and uh, a fellow uh, for the Tech Truth. And She's joined by Pooja Shivaraman, who is recently graduated from Tufts and uh, also a reporting fellow. So welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much for coming on. Thank you. Thank so you. we're so excited. Uh, we're prepping. You guys have been in a practicum all week. Uh, but before we get into that, let me start with you, uh, Karis. What, what interested you in applying for this fellowship? How did it all come about? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been covering tech kind of on and off as a journalist for about three years. Um, and throughout that time, I've noticed that we have kind of a great opportunity in technology right now. I think we're at a point where, um, you know, I mean, there are just incredible innovations coming out every day, but there isn't as much talk about who's actually creating those tech innovations. Who are the people who are behind the tech, behind the infrastructure that's going to create, you know, the, the next big thing of tomorrow. And so. I thought this fellowship is a really great opportunity to take a gendered lens at this issue because as we know, there just isn't enough res representation of women in technology. And how about you, Pooja? Sort of similar themes or? Uh, similar, as you mentioned, I just graduated from Tufts where I was part of the program of narrative and documentary practice. And over there I was working on a podcast about music and cultural appropriation and how um, with technology there's an increase in the ability to sample and how that sort of affects cultural um, appropriation across music, especially between India and the West. And that's what got me interested in the intersection of technology and social justice. So I was introduced to this fellowship and it was a perfect opportunity to talk about that intersection. Can you explain that s that sampling notion? Wh wh what do you mean by that? Uh, sure, so I always grew up listening to um, like music that was very heavily influenced both by India and the West. So I sort of took my listeners on a musical cultural journey from the Beatles to more contemporary artists like Jay-Z to indie Indian artists in the US who are using sampling as a medium to reconnect back to their roots. Um, so I think looking at music through that lens of technology is what got me interested in this whole concept of uh, social justice and technology. Okay, and, and Karis, uh, talk about Chicago Inno. I, my understanding is this is mm -hmm. hyper-targeted, local, hyper-local uh, 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 publication or yeah. you know, content. Yeah, basically the idea is that technology doesn't just happen in Silicon Valley anymore. You know, it's happening pretty much in every city and I would argue almost every town uh, nationwide. It's um, where a lot of the jobs are being created. Um, and so our point is that we want to be on the ground covering the startups, innovators, um, and tech that's happening um, really outside of Silicon Valley. So we have um, also locations in Boston, Austin, and DC. Um, and then I'm covering tech uh, in Chicago at a very hyper-local lens. Yeah, Chicago's got a good, good tech scene, mm -hmm. uh, obviously some strong Venture, a couple of startups that I know that one recently got sold that I know of. Uh, CleverSafe was a company out there. Yeah, so. huge. It's a one billion dollar sale mm, to IBM. Okay, um, how now? Let's see, Pooja. This week, uh, you guys were in a practicum at, at GBH. What, what was that like? What did you guys focus on? And we did a lot of tr like audio training, and we talked to a lot of really influential women in venture capitals and in cybersecurity. So, sort of getting into the field and learning more about the women that are really shaping the industry. Mm, okay, A and have you guys started to think about, I'm sure you've been thinking about it, but have you started to go down the path of what you're going to be covering at the event or any particular angles? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so something that's always really um, interested me is basically we have, a, in the tech world, we have a lot of examples of what happens when women aren't included in the technical process. So for example, um, Apple forgets to add period tracking to its health kit app. Um, Twitter has really struggled to create an infrastructure that doesn't um, create a lot of opportunities for harassment and misogyny. Um, so basically what happens when women are 
a part of the tech process? What happens when it's an all women tech team or majority women tech team? What does that change in the culture and then how does that impact innovation? So kind of looking at those missed opportunities and new opportunities when women are in charge in the tech of the technical process. I wonder, you know, when you think about tech, you know, the, the definition of tech has changed so much. I mean, when I was a young person, it was, it was you know, programming w defined tech. And, and as you guys are saying, the technology is, is everywhere. It's affected, I mean, you haven't grown up really without technology. <laughs> so every company is a technology company. Every consumer is a technology. My kids know technology b better than I do. So what's your take on what tech is? How do you even define tech? Um, well, actually, I was actually asked this question by a female engineer the other day, and she said, what do you think an engineer is? And so I, the best response I could come up with was that someone who is supposed to create things that either mimic or enhance the human experience, and I think that's what tech has become. It's become something that we rely on in every part of our lives. Well, and, and as well, it's the narrative that we talk about all the time is machines have always replaced humans, but they're starting to replace humans. and cognitive function now, but it's like the humans have to fight for a, a, a place, n n not only just women, but, <laughs> but humans. Uh, is this a discussion that goes on in, with your generation? And is it something that is, uh, is, is, is that, that that generation is cognizant of, or is it just sort of fate complete and mm -hmm. you embrace it? Yeah, I definitely think it's like a combination of being terrified and really excited at the same time. Um, I think there's a lot of concern about like what um, jobs are being taken, um, especially in like lower class and middle class um, communities. But I think for a lot of people who've grown up with tech today, we see so many more opportunities that are opening up because of tech. Um, whether it's that you can learn to code, create your own app, create your own website, um, you can get involved with kind of the more gig economy, um, connecting with people around the world um, to you know get job opportunities and connect with more people um, so I think there's definitely um, an understanding that like we're going into a workforce that is sort of yet undefined um, but then also realizing that 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 creates a lot of opportunities have either well. of you ever coded <laughs> very little I think just like very basic HTML like basic HTML mm -hmm. right what they yeah. taught you in school or, but you've been surrounded by people who coded your en entire lives right I mean growing mm -hmm. up you spent some time in, in Hyderabad which is mm -hmm. you know, coding central but mm -hmm. but um, so what is it about coding and women I mean I've met you know many women coders but far more men coders I mean what's your premise there mm -hmm. um, I mean it's a huge question and a very complicated one and something that we're really excited to dig into at this fellowship because I think you can find a lot of cracks in the pipeline in terms of why women aren't getting into code. I mean, you know, to start from the, the very beginning, I mean, it's even, uh, um, are your parents pushing you more, are they encouraging you, you know, when you're taking something apart and putting it back together? Um, up until, you know, how are you performing in math classes and does your teacher create an inclusive environment that allows you to, to do that? And then what do you see in movies and TV in terms of who is a coder and who gets to be a coder? Is it, a, you know, a guy in a hoodie in the corner, which doesn't really appeal to a lot of women or really a lot of people in general, but, um, you know, I mean, if, if that's the only way that you believe that a coder can look, why would you think there's a place for you there? So I mean, then it just keeps going up and um, from there because the fewer women there are, the less inclusive environment you can create within a company culture, um, which is why you'll see a lot of, uh, um, a lot of women dropping out of, um, whether it's uh, coding classes um, at the college level, whether it's once they get the job, they drop out once they um, are in the actual level. So I mean, it's, it's really like you're just seeing it go down and down as, as when we get older. And then I don't know, Pooja, if you have a perspective on this, but I remember one of our um, advisory board meetings for, for the Tech Truth, we call it the Tech Truth in quotes, uh, Esther Wojcicki was saying that there actually are a large number of women who are in computer science that choose not to go into the technology field. I don't know if that's something that you've uncovered or have even a perspective on that. Um, well, for, for my own feature, I'm really interested in looking at women gamers and game developers, and I think that's definitely a field where you can see that happening, uh, especially post Gamergate, which happened in 2014, which was a harassment movement against female gamers and game developers. And I think that's one of the most obvious examples when it comes to um, a very direct reason why women were leaving the industry because they were facing cyber harassment. And that's definitely an extreme example, but I think it speaks to the overall climate of the industry in creating a hostile environment for women who try to get into coding or gaming or game development. 
Um, and so I think that's a great example. And, and so is that g gonna be something that you're gonna explore, is the game development side or the game actual participation side or both? Or? Well, there's definitely an overlap. I think, um, especially in the gaming world, there's this really interesting relationship between input and output, as in who the people working for the company are and what you actually see on screen. So there's this interesting gender dynamic that happens on and off screen where there's definite sexism and misogyny within the characters on screen, but you can also see that playing out in who's getting employed and who are the actual game developers. And like Kars was talking about earlier, it's a great example of seeing how the lack of women has manifested itself in um, a tech industry that so many people use. And gaming has definitely become a boys club. It's a male dominated space, but um, I think it's interesting and sad that women who have attempted to change that space have been driven out just by cyber harassment. So from, from my perspective, I've been around for a long time, the industry is making progress. When I started in this business, there were no women CEOs and very few, if any, women that I can think of, eh, a couple maybe at IBM, who's been pretty good over the years, of senior executives. And today you've got Ginny Rometty, who's the CEO of IBM. Meg Whitman is the CEO of uh, Hewlett Packard and Hewlett Packard Enterprise, one of the biggest companies that, that's out there. There are companies like I mentioned Arista, Jay Shri Ulal, who's like a rock star, uh, and many, many startups um, uh, from women. So I feel like it, the industry has been making progress. From your perspectives, do you agree? Is it not enough? Uh, um, <laughs> What's your thought on yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of yes to both because mm -hmm. I think it is really exciting that you see more and more women in leadership roles because that absolutely is going to make a difference because they're the ones who are in charge both of products, so creating products that are just more inclusive to a wider audience, and then also creating that um, you know corporate culture, that community within the company that is more inclusive to women. So it's really important to see those women leaders um, at tech companies because that's going to create a much more inclusive environment. However, I think the pipeline is still a huge issue. The fact that we can't get as many women into the field because of those cracks in the pipeline that I was talking about earlier um, and then not being able to retain them um, because of whether it's kind of all those, you know, small cuts that kind of just, you know, end up ending a career um, or whatever other reason. So I think, you know, it's really important to get um, women leaders, but you also need that critical mass in order to create kind of a, a really um, healthy culture. I was at a chief data officer event a couple weeks ago, and I, I sat in a breakfast called Data Divas. So it was all women chief data officers, and so I was like the data dude, and uh, <laughs> very few of us. And But the stat came out that 25% of, of chief data officers are women and we were sort of kicking that around mm. and exploring it, and one uh, audience member posited, well, it's because that role is a very difficult role to define, and it's unclear, the success path, and it's risky. And so women said, all right, uh, I'll take that on. Mm -hmm. I was somewhat surprised by that. Is, 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 should I not be? I mean, are women more risk takers in, in this field, or I wonder if you have any perspectives on that? Um, well, I think what's, a lot of from what the research we've been doing and the people we've been speaking to is that women have to be risk takers and they have they have a responsibility to be stronger and be more pushy if they want to make it in the tech industry but um, someone we were talking to the other day said it shouldn't have to be a woman's responsibility to be strong in order to get success that's I think it's the the responsibility of the tech leaders to create an environment where you don't have to be the loudest or you don't have to be um, a risk taker in order to get success, but more to let your work speak for yourself. So I think that's another angle at looking at it, which is Well, if you're assertive as a woman, th you, you oftentimes you're labeled uh, with a pejorative if you're assertive as a man, exactly. and it's always, oh, he's a leader. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's obviously it's frustrating, but is that changing? I think, again, it's sort of like a yes and no. I think Not there's, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the McKinsey and Lean In survey, which just came yes. out in September, showed that, um, you know, even when women lean in, which is kind of act more aggressively um, and do more pushback, um, they're when they act more aggressively, they're getting pushback um, from people because they're not used to having women who um, act in that way, and so it's creating some sort of um, uncomfortable power dynamics. I think in a lot of, in a lot of these companies. So um, you know, I don't know if that means that just we just have to have more women who are pushing back, or you have to just entirely redefine what creates success within an individual company culture. And I think that does come back to having more women in leadership roles because they can help define. You know, um, success doesn't have to necessarily mean that you're louder than everyone else. 
house and more aggressive than everybody else. Um, so I think that's kind of how, how you have to address that is, you know, having women be the ones to uh, create a wider definition of what success means. Yeah, there's this kind of lean in, but but don't lean in here <laughs> mentality. Don't lean so. in too hard. Yeah, yeah don't lean exactly. in too hard, right? Yeah. But, um, well, f you know, talking about it, more transparency obviously is, is part of the mm -hmm. solution. Um, last question, what are you guys looking forward to at the, the Grace Hopper event? Things that you're you know, excited about, want to take away? Let me start with Pooja. I think I'm really excited to go to the event because I'm going in with a lot of preconceived notions about what the industry is like and I'm excited to have those challenged and to use it as like a learning experience to write the stories that we're planning on writing. Karis, anything mm -hmm. you'd add to that? Yeah, I mean, I just think we have a great opportunity with having literally 15,000 women in tech all in one place, you know, from across the entire country with a huge range of companies from, you know, the student who's just looking to get into tech after they graduate to, you know, the VP of engineering at Google. I mean, this, this is where you want to be if you're interested in tech in general. And the fact that it's all going to be from women's perspective is just another opportunity to get, you know, unheard voices. Um, and, to the and we're thrilled to be covering it with, with you guys on the Cube. Um, you two fellows along with Tori Bedford and then two other junior fellows from mm -hmm. Palo Alto High School. So if you see them, you know, take them under your wing and <laughs> mentor them a little bit. So thanks sure. very much for spending some time with us on theCUBE. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank and you good so luck much. Uh, at the conference. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching everybody. This is theCUBE. We'll see you next time.